Hi, welcome to Family Sense. Family Sense is dedicated to equipping every man, every woman, every husband, every wife with practical wisdom on family and marriage, especially in these toughest times. This is a production of No Regrets Communication, a division of Hope Education Network. Should you have any questions or need any information, please feel free to contact us on 0772-518-554. You can also contact us on 0754-734-738. You can also email us on noregrets at counselor.com. Right now, join in for insights from today's session. God bless you. Thank you, Mr. Hamba and team. I know you are speaking and the others are also speaking along with you to say we shall not waste time speaking each one by ourselves. We also create a work process of testifying what we are going through. So you realize they are really making their lives much simplified. Yeah, true. Um, we met with uh, Hamsoft. They are software engineers. They are not software sellers. They don't sell software. They create software. And really, I, I will give you a very practical example. I had some, uh, something, a task I needed to do. And, uh, I, uh, I, but I, it was taking a lot of time of mine. And uh, so I sat down. What do I do? I do this to achieve the other. So in putting that, those little steps together, what happens? You say, say, no, now, how can I quicken them even more? And that's when, of course, we met with uh, Hamsoft. And uh, some young, earlier young men ha had tried to, to, to do it, to, to promise uh, that they can do it. I gave it to them. Uh, they even asked for advance. I gave it to them. They disappeared. I, 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 another asked for a laptop, gave it to the person, disappeared. I mean, so that's exactly how we keep working. You say, where are Ugandans and what are they up to? And so what, when I met these guys, they really did, uh, at first they, uh, they did something. But I also saw they were taking a lot of time to do the basic things. So we went through the process. And of course, you say they are five months old now in that process. But uh, really, 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 work process is all in simple terms, getting organized. It's all about doing what? Getting organized. I find so many people who really, really work so hard, but they are very disorganized. And when really, as um, Hamba has already told us, in their trade software, that it is not meant to be complicated. That is exactly what it is. It is complicated in our minds because our society is not used to being organized. When we say organized, we actually see a muzungu somewhere. You say, oh, the wazungu, ah. They, but the reason they are that, it is because they've chosen to be organized. And when you choose to be organized, we really, you find that you waste less, not just time alone, but even less materials. Remember last time we had, um, in very practical sense, we have things we print out as educators. And you remember one of us here came and told, and wasted almost 150,000 shillings of printing. Why? Disorganized. I don't know how uh, this computer, uh, uh, this printer printed things, because I didn't command it to print that. I said, hmm. the printer doesn't command itself. It is a humble servant. It will do you what you have told it to do. Now, if you did it accidentally, that's another thing. And you see, they, they become so many accidents. 
to the point it becomes so expensive altogether. And uh, frankly, I, we had a bill of printing of almost 5 million shillings in one month. And most, and a good volume of it was out of not being organized. If I am going to print something, what am I going to print? How many pages am I going to print? In fact, even why am I printing it? And what is the cost behind? That is a work process. And you get organized is the thing. Get what? Organized. And you know, if you are not organized, don't just keep what you are going to do in your mind. The mind is too busy. The mind is too busy to remain organized. And you will forget, ah, I, forget I forgot this. So again, you run around with it. How together. Yet, when you are going to perform a task, frankly, personally, before I do anything, I sit down and say, step one, this, I am an educator. And in fact, we are here for educating. How together. The reason we are able to follow through and even know we have been here 16 times, it is because of the work word process. And you have heard sometimes, <clears throat> excuse me, people asking questions. We say, yes, this question is very good. And if it is answered at that time, it might just confuse again. Work process is what tells us now this question will be answered in a certain time, in its rightful place, because it is necessary to answer every question of ours. It is necessary for us to follow the what? The story. You know, what happens is that when we talk story, we begin to seek in the garden. You know, that's where the stories are made. Eh? But a story is not just mere nice, interesting words to hear. It is following through a matter from where it begins up to the way how it goes on, up to how it continues, up to the very end. Story once again. How together. And that's why we've not lost track of what we have studied. What did you see Mrs. Kayondo do here? She was able to say, please, last time we handled this and this and this. And she was able to follow through because there is a what? A process, a system of how things get done. And when we say system, it makes you systematic. Being systematic is actually being what? Orderly. And look at that statement there. It's also part of what God expects us to do. What does he say? Everything should be what? Done in a fitting and orderly way. And order is the first thing God, is, the, is one of the first principles God uh, established even in Genesis chapter 1. Look back and look at it. <clears throat> What does it say? It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless. Shapeless is another word for it. And empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And verse 3. And God said, let there be light, and there was what? Light. God saw that the light was good. What is the next step he did? And he separated the light from darkness. You see, the separation of light from darkness is in an initiation of order. Separating one step from another, separating one thought in an from another, is what causes us to get organized. Is actually, that is where we begin to become systematic in what we do. Otherwise, if the thoughts are just right in my mind, they're confused up, what is going to happen? I'm just going to run a confused kind of way of doing things. I'm going to, ah, I forgot to do the other. I forgot to do the other. I wish I had done this before I did the other. But now we are seeing God teaching us the way of work. And he says he separated the light from what? 
darkness. And God called the light day and called the, 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 the darkness night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. That is just to give a picture altogether. And so much of what we have is actually a reason. So much of what we lose in our nation here, it is primarily because we work in a very disorganized way. I have lived with the weight of disorder so much in our nation, and that's what I find all over. I do a lot of advisory work, call it consultancy work, out together. All over, in many big and small companies, I don't ignore a small company, even a kiosk I will advise, I will offer my consultancy service. But even multinationals, I do provide my, what? A service to them. Why? Because we have to keep doing the ministry that we are doing, the business work we are doing, all together. And now I have found, I can paint a picture of disorganized companies here, which existed and they appeared to be so, 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 so good. And they lost it and other people picked it by order they have sustained there. I can see, we used to have what we call speedy delivery. It was the first money transfer kind of thing here in Uganda. Even what? Korea in Uganda. And let me tell you, you want a letter from Kabale to where? To, 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 to Busia, you will get it the next day. Not so in a poster. And they did a very good job to begin with. And they seemed to be doing very well. They even entered into transferring money. You deposit it somewhere in, in where? In Busia, you get it somewhere in Arua the same day. Altogether. They did all that. And what happened after? collapse. Altogether, in its place, we have DHL running Roko Korea now. Altogether, get into transportation. Now we need it, uh, international people to, 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 to try to do something. Ugandans, where are, you, where are we? I have, sorry, I will not mention names here. I have a place where some Ugandans were trading some very nice products which are needed in the nation and they are still needed. And they are in the pharmaceutical what? Um, sector. How to get it? They come here, they say, we need to do something. Okay, we want to, to begin manufacturing. And they started manufacturing some products here in Uganda. And they didn't have the money really to invest. We sat down together, I told you that. We, we initiated a system of work, like we are talking about here. And to cut the long story short, the organized process that we are put together in there, we were able to convince even uh, government to give what we call a guarantee, not money. A guarantee is uh, put, uh, given under the hand of a president eh? to say, yeah, please, uh, bank, whichever bank they are, give these people money. If they fail, government will pay. There is no money exchanging, but that is actually putting the, in the entire land title of Uganda to, to risk. Eh? But that is okay if it's something is good. And there's nothing wrong with that. And anybody, any one of us here can do it if it is a strategic and necessary dodge, I mean, a project. Money, they got it. Investing, they did it. I'm talking about almost $35 million. That's not a small job. And don't think it's for big companies. A company grows from being very small. Don't ignore and don't even think you should get organized. That's when you, uh, I mean, you should get big, then you get organized. Actually, it is order that takes you to become big. Without order, you will always remain like a kiosk. You might want to run a supermarket with a, with a kiosk mind, running around and around, disorganized. Believe me, you will remain a kiosk. Altogether. So it is not a mystery. It is not that it is meant to be very big. Already the, 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 what, the software valley of, of Kawala has explained to us certain things. Their productivity has multiplied so much. Now they work. <laughs> they, are, they take a lot shorter time to perform tasks. They deliver uh, the, the, the products they do much faster. And you see, at first they thought uh, the computer does the work, right? 
But in software, again, you begin to say, I'm going to paper. Each one of us wants to buy a computer that makes things easier. No. Computers will make things harder if you yourself is disorganized. All together. I'm trying to emphasize this thing. It is just get what? Organized. Just get organized. And organize you first. Organize yourself. Prepare yourself. Do your work very well. I've given you a personal experience as an educator and how so much get lost, gets lost because someone is not organizing themselves. Life becomes far more expensive when you get disorganized. Work becomes so terrible that basically you cannot even know how much time you use to do a task. It's an indication of disorder. And you are not going to jump out of disorder. Now I'm going to get organized. You grow into being organized. Take the first steps. Take baby steps. Don't rush into it. You will even break yourself when you try to say, I've been disorganized. Now I want to get organized. You will break yourself. Remember that you are engaged in a family sense gathering which is dedicated to equipping every man, every woman, every husband, every wife with practical wisdom on family and marriage. I hope you're enjoying yourself. Don't rush into it. You will even break yourself when you try to say, I've been disorganized. Now I want to get organized. You will break yourself. Take it step by word. Step. Simple word, steps. Don't even think it is a Muzungu concept. It is a godly concept. It's beautiful for anyone. All together. I, you can give me, demystify you said, eh? you, you can give me a task. And somebody says, I want it now, now. I say, no, 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 no. You want it now, now. I will not be able to serve you. I'm undoing advisory work. I'll tell you, I'm not able to serve you. Hey, who doesn't want money? But the, my primary focus is not on the money. I have a mission. All together. Yeah, so say, ah, please, I won't serve you because you want it in that time and I can't do it in that time. You give me some four weeks, I might tell him. I say, so, uh, no, but I can't. So please, then find someone. There are some nice guys, nice people who can do serve you very well. Find them. So where can I find them? I don't know. But you find them. As for me, if you want me to do it, this is how much. This is how much time I'll need. All together. Now, when you give me a task, I might not just wake up in the morning and just begin to do. No, don't just begin to do what? To do. Sit down. Organize yourself. All together. Even a lady, Mrs. Mwesugwa, might, might want to cook food and then she forgot to buy the salt. Why? Disorder. I'm not saying that's what she does, but I'm just showing even a housewife will, will go through things and fail to do the things that will, and meals will come very late. Losing the most valuable asset called time and even materials because of what? Disorder. So system of work simply says, get what? Organized. And what does it say? Everything should be done in a fitting and orderly way. What does everything include? Even eating food? Yes. I should be organized even in that. So with that, I think I have tried to labor to do something that maybe I've masqueraded. Over to you, Mrs. Kayondo. We started looking at the components of a system of work in our last session. And we said... What makes up a system of work? First of all, if you look in the blue, it is arranging tasks. What are the tasks that I need to do in order to achieve this thing that I need to achieve? And after arranging the tasks, we deploy resources. What do I need to implement each of those tasks? And then deploy people as we are planning. Which people do I need? 
in what layers, in what, what kind of people, how many. And then we implement and give an account. Those are the things that make up a system of work. And today, we want to move on to discussing deploying people over here. That is going to be the core of today's discussion, people deployed to function. And we are going to discuss it in those four topics. First of all, we need to, reco need to recognize that, that we need to understand that we need suitable helpers in the work. We are going to talk about that. The first one, as we've said, is recognizing the need for suitable helpers. Now, there is no one that can do everything by themselves. And this principle God set in himself in the first place in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15 to 18. And this scripture is written there for all of us. The Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. After he said, take care and work this garden. He then said, no, it is not good for this man to be alone. I will make him a, suitable, a, a helper suitable for him. You know? I know, like last time Mr. Mwesugwa said, people like to boast that I am self-made. There is not a single person that can do all things by themselves. Each one of us needs someone. At any step of life that we are at, each one of us needs someone. And this recognition is very, very important because you know that the people are there to help you you begin to see the full potential in others and the full value in others. You know, sometimes when we look at this, God said it is not good for man to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. Then we think, oh, now we, 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 we box it. I need, uh, I need this helper. She will cook. She will maybe take care of the home. She will wash my clothes. And I will finally have a bed mat and all that. And that is my what? My helper. And my, when I leave the home, that may not be a lie. That is probably true. But when I leave at home and I go to work, it's my what? Business. This person doesn't need to know. It can happen either way. But the principle here is God said we need helpers in order to fulfill that responsibility that he has given. And when we recognize this, you recognize the full value and potential of your wife. You also recognize the full value and potential of that person you have employed in your business. You know, I can fire them any day and find someone else. Uh -uh. You begin to see the full potential and value of these people. So where do we get these suitable helpers? The suitable helpers are within family. They come from our families and also outside our families. Okay? So we want to see how then do we identify these people who are helpers to us, that we need to help us. And I would like to invite Mr. Mwesigwa to take on over from here. Genesis chapter 2 says a great deal. Uh, verse 15 to verse 18 says, And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden. Also, okay, sorry, to, in Kawara, to, to, to produce some work and take care of it. Does that make sense? And the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. So he's giving him the work. Next, he's giving him the rules. And then finally, he says, the Lord God said, it is not good for a man to be alone. I'll make a helper suitable for him. I want to underline the word suitable more. 
If you remove the word suitable, then what are you having? You are just having any helper. So probably even an unsuitable helper. Is that possible then? And how many times do we work with the people and then we are all complaining about them? Do we bother to find out who is suitable for the work we are doing? And how many times does a man find a, 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 a woman and say, oh, I've never found this is the angel of everything, huh? And then in month one, they are, the marriage is bliss and everything. And then after six months, huh, is she the right one? Could she have been a different one? We begin to doubt. Why? Did we bother to know if the person was the suitable one for us? And what, is, if, what even makes someone suitable? Those are questions we have to ask ourselves. And you realize it seems to heighten up, especially when we want to marry. But we even never bother to know how far it goes and how deep this principle is. And yet God set it in the very beginning. It's not good for anyone to be alone. No one, no one can fulfill any task by themselves in this world. No one. Even this videographer will need a person to actually do what? Produce for him a camera. Or else you can produce your own camera. But even after that, he needs someone else to produce for him a printer. How together? Even you, are you producing your own print or computers? No one. So each one of us needs another. That is the bottom line to begin with. That you need another person. And the more responsibility you have, the more other people you'll need to be participants in the process of your work. That's the way it is. So that should tell us it is very, 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 very important for us to learn that we need helpers. So you identify a helper according to the task at hand. That is extremely important for us to know. And you remember as we speak and get into this thing, this is something which is a bit strange for many people, but we have to really raise up. Before we get into this thing, let us remind ourselves that we are following a what? A story. Please don't lose that story. We are talking economy in the family. You remember that very well? We are talking what? Economy in the family. We see and we saw by ourselves that God put all the resources available for us. The first thing he provided for the human being are abundant resources. You can't say there is any nation, any family that should be lacking. Every family is provided for in this world. That's a tough saying, especially when you don't have lunch. Eh? When you are not sure of where the lunch is going to come from or where the school fees for the next time is coming from. But let me tell you, everything that every family is need, needs is provided. That's why those resources which we read about, which Mrs. Kayondo took us through, that abundant resources were provided for the person to enjoy while on this earth. We keep talking of Uganda Zabu. Indeed, we have so much with us that we should not be crying of luck as a nation. And I want to challenge you on that one. We have more than enough. But if you don't use the resources God so abundantly apply, gave you, don't think they will remain redundant. Someone else will find use for those resources at your own loss. Hello? Yes. If you don't use the resources God so provided for us, someone else will so use them at your own loss. In fact, you becoming a slave in those same resources. That is it. It's tough to say. But that is it. The only way 
You will have the resources, but they remain unlocked. You can't use them. And they are abandoned. But you can't use them. Today, for failure to use what we have, we sign contracts with others to use it for us and give us some bits of it for use. All together. We have failed even to do the basics. We fail to do our work very well. Another comes, even it just becomes a trader. Someone comes from elsewhere and the trade is the, even the very basic things we should have done. And the best, the worst we are doing is to complain about how foreigners are even also trading. They are entering, but to Jaumo business. You say, come on, why should, because the moment I see Muyindi together as my neighbor, uh, the first thing I get defeated is going to take me away. Isn't that so? Ah, no, no, I, am I telling a lie? In your mind, you think for you, you are the weak one. So the thing begins from where? From inside. And until we break our inside there, and the real, real, real thing is not necessarily lack of hard work, although we are also lazy. I know that very well. But disorganized is the real thing. How disorganized we tend to be. Family Sense is on a mission of teaching God's truth for reforming marriages and building families throughout the nation. Stability of our nation can only be realized with well-founded families and marriages. We therefore invite you to engage in Family Sense gatherings. Should you have any questions, or need specific assistance, please feel free to contact us on 0772-518-554 or 0754-734738. You can also email us on no regrets at counselor.com. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you next time.